Assalamu alaikum, my dear student. How are you? Today I'm here to discuss the solution of assignment number two, which is mainly based on chemistry of alkane. The question I gave in assignment number two, the first question was how to classify each carbon atom as zero, one, two, three, and four degree in the following structure. This is the structure which I gave. Before I discuss the solution of this question, let me clarify some terms. These are some important point which we have discussed in our last online lecture that one degree or primary carbon is the carbon when carbon directly attached to one carbon. Two degree carbon or the secondary carbon is when carbon directly attached to two carbon. Three degree carbon means when carbon directly attached to three carbons and quaternary carbon when carbon directly attached to four carbons and when carbon do not directly attach with any carbon it is known as super primary carbon. Beside this, we can also cl classify the carbon around the double bond in case of uh, alkenes and alkyne as well. But there is no clear instruction how to classify the carbon-carbon double bond as two, three, four degree carbon. That's why we have to use some analogy and we take some inspiration from spectroscopy and from stereochemistry or some carbon phantom atom. Okay, here, as you know that uh, alkenes have, we have different type. And sometimes we have non-alkylated alkene, which is also known as unsubstituted alkene. And sometimes we have some alkylated alkenes, for example, monoalkylated, di, tri, and tetraalkylated alkene. Let's see how we can classify first non-alkylated alkene. In this example, you can see we have an alkene which is carbon-carbon double bond and this carbon-carbon double bond is not directly attached with any alkyl group. And it is only attached with carbon-carbon double bond. So each carbon around the double bond is basically having a two degree classification. And the other one also having a two degree classification in case of non-alkylated olefins. Similarly, if one of the methyl group directly attached with the carbon-carbon double bond, so this carbon, which having the alkyl group is basically having three degree of classification, two because of the double bond and one because of this alkyl group. While the other carbon who do not have any alkyl group is only having a two degree of classification. Okay, now see here. In case of if we have dialkylated olefins, we have two situations that these two alkyl group can be on the same carbon atom and these two alkyl group can be on both sides of the carbon around the double bond. Now what happened, how we can classify these carbon if we have two alkyl group on the same carbon around the double bond. So this carbon would be counted as four degree carbon, while the other car carbon who do not have any alkyl group except the carbon-carbon double bond will be considered as two, uh, uh, two degree carbon. Similarly, in this example, you can see here, each carbon having one alkyl group beside this double bond. So, so each carbon is basically three degree, three degree carbon. In case, if we have trialkylated olefins, we have just one situation. Either one carbon is considered as four degree and other is considered as three degree carbon. Similarly, if we have carbon-carbon double bond and we have tetraalkylated olefins, then we have just one situation. Each carbon will be considered as quaternary or four degree carbon. While in case of a triple bond, if we have a CH, 
around the triple bond, the CH will be considered as three degree. While if we have alkylated triple bond, we have a quaternary carbon. Let us see the example or the question. I am converting line angle structure into basically a CH for the clear visualization. Now, as I mentioned here in this structure, second carbon is basically a three degree carbon, which is bonded directly with the three carbon. Carbon number three is having four degree, carbon number four is three degree, carbon number five is three degree, carbon number six is three degree, carbon number seven is three degree. You can visually visualize yourself that three degree means carbon six is bonded with three, diff three di uh, different carbon. When, if I'm talking about the carbon number eight, that this is the carbon number eight, this side we have carbon, this side we have a carbon, and this side we have a carbon-carbon double bond. That's why this carbon is considered as the quaternary carbon or the four degree carbon. Let us see in the other ring, the carbon number two prime and the five prime, both are one degree carbon. You can see that this carbon directly bonded with this carbon, and this carbon is directly bonded with this carbon only, while either side we have oxygen or the nitrogen, which are not the carbon. So that's why carbon two prime and carbon five prime will be considered as one degree carbon. In the third thing, you can see here, we just let me explain this four double prime, CH2. Both side we have the oxygen. This carbon is do not directly attached with any carbon and it is only CH2. So this way, this carbon is known as super primary carbon or zero degree carbon. That's how we can classify individually every carbon atom. Now let us come to the question number two. I ask you, how could we synthesize 2,5-dimethylhexane using the following reagents? And the reagents are, hydrogen and nickel ethanol, and B, electrolysis, C, hydrazine in basic condition, D, zinc in acidic condition, C, we have a sulfur containing group in water and rainy nickel, and F, we have basically a sodium metal. These are the reagents, and we have to synthesize 2,5-dimethylhexane, and we have to choose the starting compound keeping in mind these reagents. Now let us see the solution of this question. For example, in the number one, if we are using hydrogen in presence of nickel as a catalyst, then it means the starting compound could be an unsaturated alkenes, like in this way. Now the double bond can be everywhere. It double bond can be here, double bond can be here, double bond can be here, or double bond can be in the branches as well. Hydrogen in presence of this uh, strong catalyst will hydrogenate this double bond and give you this corresponding alkene. And this reaction is known as hydrogenation of alkenes. Second one. Second one, I ask you that how we can synthesize this 2,5-dimethylhexane by means of electrolysis. Now, we have a basically named reaction of this um, reaction type. Once we have basically sodium salt of this carboxylic acid, this reaction happens in the presence of basically the electricity and by means of the free radical, and this reaction known as called base electrolytic method. But for unfortunately, this starting compound will lose carbon dioxide by means of a systematic process and give you a free radical. Now this free radical can be converted into the stable form uh, into uh, three degree free radical form. So me, we may have this product as well, and along with the, our target compound. So once we are using the coal-based electrolytic method 
in order to synthesize this one, we may have the side product as well. Third one, I ask you synthesize this 2,5-dimethylhexane using hydrazine in basic condition. This is the name reaction, which is known as the wolf kishner reduction. Okay, now we can have a carbonyl anywhere in uh, this type of this structure. We may have a carbonyl here, or we, have, we may have a carbonyl uh, at this carbon atom, or we may have a carbonyl atom at this carbon atom. First, this carbonyl compound will convert into the hydrazone, and on basic hydrolysis, it will convert into this corresponding alkane. This is wolf kishner reduction to convert carbonyl compound into alkane. Second one, the next one. I ask you to use zinc in HCl. This is also the name reaction, which is known as Clemenson reduction. This is similar type of the reaction of the wolf kishner reduction. This is in basic condition, while this is in the acidic condition. Same, we can use any type of the carbonyl. Carbonyl can be here, here, or here, vice versa, to give you this corresponding alkane. Third one is basically, again, to convert carbonyl compound into the corresponding alkane in neutral condition, which is known as basically the Mozingo reduction. Now, what happened, we can use the carbonyl here, 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 or here, vice versa. It will, a two-step reaction to convert into the corresponding alkane. The last, the last one is basically, again, the name reaction, which is known as the Wurz reaction. Wurz reaction and Kolbe's electrolytic reaction, both have basically a byproduct. Why? Because Wurz reaction also proceed via the free radical mechanism. Once the chlorine will be eliminated by means of the sodium, free radical will be generated here, which ultimately stabilize itself to be the three degree free radical. So we may have a two product in this reaction as well, along with our target product. So this is basically how we can synthesize 2,5-dimethylhexane using these reagents. The question three, which I ask you, complete the following reactions by writing the suitable products. And you can see here the first question I ask you in methane using halogen in excess, methane in excess, then halogen, and then so we have two methyl propane, then propane, and then cyclohexane to convert into the corresponding product. How we can convert? Let me discuss the product. The first one, the first two reaction based on free radical mechanism, or which, which are basically a chain reaction example. And you know, based on a radical reaction, we have the three stages or three steps. The first step, the chain initiation. The second step, the chain propagation step. The third step, the chain termination step. Now, what happened? Once we have chlorine in excess, it will consume all of the hydrogen. And ultimately, the main product will be carbon tetrachloride instead of the chloroform. Similarly, if we have methane in excess. So only the limiting the chlorine will consume and we may have chloroform or the methyl chloride as a main product in this case. Third question I ask you convert to methyl propane and the product you can see here the bromination is slower than chlorine, chlorination because the first propagation step is more endothermic and overall reaction is exothermic. As a result, bromination is more selective than chlorination. And uh, of course, this is an example of free radical mechanism first. I'm just uh, explaining the main step. The bromine will cleave homolytically to give you the bromine radical, then bromine radical react with two methyl propane to give you this. Uh, the very stable radical, the three degree radical. 
then this three degree radical is basically react with the bromine to give you this compound. Um, okay, basically we have the major product two, you can identify. We have a basically two methyl, two bromo, propane, the major product as well. Fourth one, reaction of propane with SO2, Cl2. Now we have basically a thionyl chloride. In case of sunlight, we have basically a sulfuryl chloride, alkane sulfuryl chloride, keep remember, in case of sunlight. But if we increase the temperature instead of the sulfuryl chloride, we may have the alkyl chloride and sulfur dioxide. So this is basically a temperature dependent reaction. The last reaction is the combustion reaction in which oxygen, in the presence of oxygen, when we heat any alkane or cycloalkane, it will convert into its corresponding carbon dioxide and the water molecule. Now in case of cycloalkane, the general formula is the number of carbon atom we have, it will give you the same number of carbon dioxide along with the same number of water molecule. But if we have an aliphatic alkane, one um, water molecule will be in addition. Now, this is the answer we have. We have the six carbon dioxide molecule along with the six water molecule. That's all for assignment number two.